Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be doing a first impressions of the new Kaleidos Flower Punk Collection. So if you wanna see my demo, playing with these shadows and giving you all of my thoughts and just keep watching. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. I'm looking a little pasty right now. It's because I am. I'm using a foundation that's way too light for me because I'm testing it out and I didn't pick the best color for myself. So once we get the whole get up, it will look a lot better. But yes, uh, Kaleidos released their Flower Punk collection and it did already release. However, they said there's one shade from the palette that they are unable to get right now for whatever reason. And so uh, the palette is temporarily unavailable. And looking on the website, it does seem that the majority of the products besides a couple of the lip sets are unavailable. Wow, okay. But let's start off with what is in the collection. So the Flower Punk collection, you can order the entire set, including this awesome dresser with all of the makeup products inside. And also there's at the very top, it's like some stickers and a coloring book. You are actually able to get that for $137 once everything restocks. And oh, almost forgot to mention, this was sent to me from Kaleidos, but I love their products from the the very very beginning they have such good products and the thing that really impresses me with Kaleidos is it feels like over time as more and more people are getting into their brand they're just conceptually getting so much better they've been stepping it up with every single collection quality all of it now everything is going to be 137 you can actually order just the dresser without the makeup for 50 dollars. i mean i don't necessarily know that it's worth that but it's really beautiful like i'm gonna leave this out in my room and keep it forever it's so cute the coloring book you can get for five dollars you can get the temporary tattoos for three dollars you can really get everything there also are a couple lip sets that we will get into which are still available if you're interested there is a lip mask and of course the palette so we'll start off with the lip mask which is available this is called the blue agave softening lip mask pretty simple packaging even for kaleidos here is what the plastic looks like it's like a nice kind of plastic packaging let me turn the lights down just a little bit it definitely feels a lot softer than it looks oh yeah you can see it's quite smooth doesn't really smell like much. It's only $8. It reminds me a lot of the Laneige. The texture's a little bit more melted than the Laneige, mm, but it's giving me like a nice minty sensation right now. Nothing too overpowering. I like it, so we're just gonna let it sit on my lips while we're working on the eyes. So it's time to get into, obviously this is what most of us are excited about, the Flower Punk palette. So this palette is gonna be $36 on its own. Like I said, it's temporarily unavailable, but the packaging, this is what I mean by Kaleidos is just so clever. Everything about it is just aesthetic and then here is how the packaging looks on the outside of the palette it says a radically verdant vision of lush greens and soft earthy tones makeup on the bright side on the back we are made in the prc 12 month shelf life vegan and cruelty free what's interesting about this packaging and we've seen palettes like this before but it's not common is you can completely take off the top it does have a mirror and you can you know put it on like this you can have it whatever however you want be careful with packaging like this because far too many times have i not been paying enough attention and i've gouged an eyeshadow with the corner here so i don't necessarily love it i would have just preferred kind of normal packaging but whatever it's fine and if you take a look at the palette super cute it is very reminiscent of melt cosmetics which a lot of people have noticed and i mean here's the thing i don't even care because melt's been doing me dirty recently so if the kaleidos formula can overpower the melt then kaleidos has it for me especially with these green tones down here this is a very melt like palette now melt doesn't have you know a color story like this side but they definitely have a color story like this i've only swatched these so far i haven't actually tried them i will say the swatches weren't the best they were a little bit more muted 
especially the shimmers I noticed were a little bit more, dare I say chunky, not chunky, but they weren't as opaque as I would like. And I felt like I had to build them up and I also felt like the mattes were soft, but that can translate on the eyelids very, very well. So of course, won't give my final opinion until I try it, but I did want to note that I wasn't in awe of the swatches, but that means nothing truly. So I just have a little bit of concealer on my eyelid, which I always say does not really suffice as an eye primer, but yeah, who has time for anything else, you know? And as much as I wish that this wasn't a first impressions, I wish I had more time to create multiple looks for you guys, but six more weeks of school, six more. And then I have the summer to do as I please, but we're gonna start off with some of Peach Soju right here. A little bit powdery, but nothing crazy. And we're gonna use this on the inner half of the crease. And this is a really pretty soft kind of color. Like that, a good way to start off this look. Next up, let's go into a little bit of chlorophyll right here. Just using the same brush. This is an Isom V34. And we're just gonna put that right next to the last color that we just used. And for not having a very bright base, these colors are resting very pretty on my eyelid. It's almost like a little bit of a pukey yellow kind of color. Now we're gonna go into Golden Age right there. Now this shade is not too different from the color that we just applied, so maybe a bit redundant. You can see the slight tonal differences here, but as you can see, they kind of blend out to be the same, which is not something that I would say that I love. I know my brushes look dirty, I promise you. They have been spot cleaned. They're not deeply cleansed. I'm not gonna lie about that, but they are spot clean. Okay, let's play with Mint Fever because I have to. Is this look gonna be cohesive? Probably not, um, but I want to play with as many colors as possible. This is blending into those yellow-green shades pretty well, and it's holding its own with pigmentation. I was a tad bit underwhelmed with my swatches of these mattes because they just seemed a little bit more sheer compared to some other formulas that I have in my collection, but they are applying to the lid a-okay. They're actually popping more than I expected them to. This is a refer number 14 brush in case you're curious. Ooh, we got a fun cotton candy-ish kind of look going on. Really pretty for the spring. This is definitely color story wise a fabulous spring color story and it's very different as well. You get a little bit more grungy over here and then you have your cotton candy kind of colors on this side. Okay, because I have to, I need to test the true opacity of these colors. I'm going to take this little tiny brush from Alamar Cosmetics and we're going to go into Earthship, which is the deepest color that you're going to get from this palette. So if you like those deeper tones, kind of looks. Just know that you're really not going to get that from this palette. It's lighter, more spring-like kind of pastel-y shades. Typically, I do like to add some depth into my looks, so this isn't a color story that calls out to me. When I look at this palette, I don't go, oh my gosh, that's me. I have to have it. But it's still very, very pretty, and I think for the spring look, you're really going to like it. And um, this color is working out beautifully blending in with the other colors very nice as well and I think the other colors have held on pretty well also because a lot of times you'll find that these shades right here that you'll initially put down need a little bit more oomph to them after mixing with other shades they just lose that opacity these have held on pretty well. I do want to take, I'm wiping off this brush, a little bit of Mint Fever. This is one shade that did kind of lose its presence a little bit, so I'm just gonna pop it just a little bit out here, and it's good like that. That's fine. Now I'm gonna take some more of Mint Fever, and I want this to show through a little bit more. I want a fun minty pop. These shades, as you can see, they are giving me some fallout, but nothing crazy, and it's not, you know, falling out all over my face. So I'm not having any issues with that. We're gonna take just a little bit more of Earthship, and just to create some cohesion, we're gonna put some of that right in these outer parts of the lower lash line. One of the most important parts are the shimmers, so we're gonna start off with stained glass right here. This has a very slight pink golden shift, 
a very soft duochrome and I'm gonna put this over by that pink. Really pretty, very soft. This is one of the shades that I worried about when swatching. Uh, it is a softer shade, it's not gonna give you opacity, but it's more so about that duochrome kind of finish. So almost a little bit more kind of galactic looking. Very, very pretty. I wish though they had a couple more shimmers in this palette. There are only three, the mattes are beautiful, but the three, these two seem to both be more lid toppery and only one kind of true shimmer shade. I would have liked to have seen more of the shimmer formula rather than the lid toppers. But that's me getting really picky. We're gonna go into Sun Gazer next. Yes, yeah, so this is a shimmer. I was a little bit worried. It felt a tad chunky with swatch. She doing just fine on her own. Kind of blend the textures together so there's a little bit more cohesion. And the blue, the mint shade, is getting lost pretty easily. I want to bring some of it back. We're going to go back into Aloe Cove, which feels like another lid topper similar to stained glass. I'm going to take it on a small brush, and this is no glitter glue. It's running it down along the lower lash line. I know we have a bit of eyeshadow barf going on in my eyes right now, but when I only can do one look, this is the way it's got to be, and I mean, it is so stunning. Honestly, what a fun look. I do want to bring a little bit more of that pink back. Just want a little bit more of a fun pink pop. So we're going to go back into Peach Soju and bring it back right here so it doesn't get lost. And for the heck of it, let's take some of the shimmery shade Stained Glass and put it right in that inner part. Put it right in the inner corner just to make the pink have its own moment in this look and do the tear duct as well. How fun is this look? I'm going to put on some eyeliner, eyelashes, and I'll be back to kind of give you my final thoughts on this. But here's what the shadows look like up close. I mean, this is such a fun look. I'm really happy with how I paired all of these together. The only one I didn't use today, wow, I'm good. I didn't use this shade right here, but I use all of the others in this look. I'm so impressed with myself. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so final look. I love it, love it, love it. And the shadows really impressed me. I will admit with my initial arm swatches, I was, uh, I was a little bit worried, but performance absolutely delivered. Side note on the other makeup that I'm wearing, it will be in the description box. That foundation that I was testing out was the Sephora Best Skin Ever. I hadn't been grabbing for it, so I wanted to give it another chance, and I really do not like this. The texture of my skin is not looking good. Don't recommend this, okay. <laughs> um, I also use the Kaleidos Star Surfer Highlight, which is very pretty. I do like this. Okay, let's move on to the last two items in this collection. By the way, wiped off what was left of the lip mask. Really love that. Great deal for $8. I think if you're going to pick up stuff from the collection, I think the lip mask might be a nice add-on. It's not something that you're going to be disappointed in, and I love a good lip mask, so recommend that. The last two items here are the lip clay sets. There are two. There is Flora Noir, which is the blue one, and there's Sand Castle, which is the more pinky one. And the packaging of these, they're like tin, absolutely beautiful. The thing that I'm loving with this collection is you want to keep the packaging. This is by far their best packaging so far. There isn't a mirror or anything in it, but you do have the four colors. They're like a soft matte, and I'm gonna swatch them for you. Let's do that. So the first color that we have is Cactus Flower. Let's take a look at the wand. Uh, I believe this is a new formula from Kaleidos, so I'm figuring it out with you guys. Okay, so the shade is very, very bright. <laughs> okay, let's pull out the next one. This is Dahlia, same packaging. Dahlia is gonna be a little bit deeper. These look like they are kind of like a soft matte formula, similar to what Rare Beauty has, but it seems to have a touch more pigment compared to the Rare Beauty, not quite as tinted. This one is Agave. Holy moly. <laughs> Whoa, now this one's a little bit patchy on the hand, as I would expect it to be. I did make up this morning, so my hand's a little bit dry from washing, but wow. Okay, uh, get this set if you like color, because this will not disappoint. Very, very unique, probably not for me. Okay, last one is Mahogany. Ooh, I like this one. I like a good deep chocolate color on the lips sometimes. So again, this is the Flora Noir set. 
It is $35 for all four of these, a new formula that I've never tried before. Something tells me the next set is going to have colors that I will prefer. <laughs> So the pink one, again, Sand Castle. These might be in weird orders. I pulled these out. And here's a closer look at the packaging. Same soft matte packaging. Oh, my fingers are so dry. Okay, we have Abode. Oh my goodness. Okay, these colors are right up my alley. So that's gonna be this swatch right here. A nice muted pinky color. Next one, we have Dune. This one is a bit deeper. Touch more purple in there. Okay, so here is... Tara. So you'll probably like this one if you like a little bit more warm kind of colors. And the last one is Sienna, which isn't too different from some of the other colors. I mean, if you have my taste in lip colors, obviously Sand Castle is going to be a little bit more for me, for my preferences. This is kind of crazy in the best way. I'm trying to decide what should I wear. Mm. This color could be cool, but I'm gonna end up with this color because it just goes the best with the look. This is Adobe. So it really does feel like that Rare Beauty formula as well. Pretty good opacity, a little bit more warm than I thought it was gonna be color-wise. Very comfortable and it gave me much more coverage than I was expecting. I actually want to take a little bit of this hot pink color because this translated a lot warmer than I was um, anticipating. But as you can see, it's more of a matte kind of finish. So we're gonna go into cactus flower. This could turn out disastrous. Mm. Oh my gosh, these blended together beautifully and they feel oddly comfortable even with layering. They have like a blurring effect to the lips as well. Wow, $35 for all of these colors and I can't speak on wear time obviously, but I love this formula. I definitely feel like this is less drying than the Rare Beauty and so comfortable. Oh my gosh, these might be my favorite thing from the collection. All right, give me a second. I'm going to bring us out and I'm going to close this off with my final thoughts. All right, as we close this out, I have to say there is not one thing from this collection do that I don't enjoy. We'll start off with the lip mask. I think that's great. I don't think you need to make an order for the lip mask, but if you're making in order on some of the other products in the collection, definitely throw the lip mask in there. It's really nice. I enjoyed it a lot. The palette, I ended up really liking. I'm not the biggest fan of the style of packaging here. I hope they don't continue with that, but I was impressed with the quality of this. I think minor improvements could be made. Like, I don't think these two colors were necessary. I would have liked to have seen some more thick pigmented shimmers as opposed to just two duochromes in one shimmer. Maybe take away one of these mattes, that kind of thing. But interesting color story. Really fun pairings that you can make for this spring and summer. And super pleasantly surprised by this formula from them. They've never come out with a lip formula, I believe, like this, and I've got to say they nailed it. Now, obviously, Sandcastle is going to be more for me and most of you guys, but such a fun set to get this one right here just to play with some colors. I am very impressed with this formula. I had originally started this video thinking like these were not going to be a necessity from this collection. It was all going to be about the palette, but I'm so shocked at how great this formula feels that it's probably the most surprising thing which makes me super excited for it also we need to talk about the wear time on these even more impressed now okay here's a video this was after eating a salad and y'all know eating a salad is messy no transfer down here no fading i've been wearing it now for about five hours and it's faded a little bit but my lips don't look dry i don't feel anything on my lips this lip product it's magic okay had to share that the only thing i can't recommend is this unrelated Sephora best kid ever because it's ruining this look. <laughs> I think that the packaging is just exquisite with this collection. You don't need to buy PR sets. Obviously, you're buying for the product, but the packaging here, that dresser is just so cool. I do think waiting for the entire PR box to come in is worth it because this, I mean, you can store things in here. It's super duper cute. It's quite sturdy. Like, it feels high quality as well 
well. So I'm really excited about this collection and I think everything is worth it and I would hold off and just buy the whole set because it's so fun. Everything from the package to the products. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.